Hi, Taryn. Hi. Hello. Hey. Hello, everybody. I think this looks like everyone we're expecting. Four, five. Oh no, we might be missing one person. I heard from one committee member that she could not make it tonight. Still here. So it's either Jessica or Christina. Was that? Okay. Yeah, Christina was is not able to make it tonight. Okay. It looks like Jessica's here. No, don't do that. No. Come on, get down. Get down right now. Huh. Okay. Get down. Get down. <laughs> Struggles of Zoom meetings with animals. Oh no! Can you see my sweetie? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she. He wants me to. He wants my attention. Sorry. Are you guys able to see me? No. Uh, it's just black. Yep. Hmm, I'm gonna try to leave and rejoin. Not sure what's wrong with my camera. I'm not sure what's wrong with my camera. Maybe it's time for a Zoom update. Maybe. That could be. All right, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome everybody. My name is Taylor Campy. I'm the city planner for Estacada. This is the first ever meeting of the Diversity Action Committee, a brand new committee, as you know, that the council um, decided in October to establish. Um, I'll go ahead and pull up, I'll share my screen to show the agenda here. Maybe. Um, also, I got a message that my connection is unstable. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yes. Great. Okay. So um, we are going to do some introductions, just a little bit of getting to know each other. Um, we'll hopefully establish a regular meeting time um, for this committee. We'll go over the purpose and the charge. Um, why does this committee exist? What are we planning to do? Um, I will give a, I will try to be very brief, just an overview of um, some of the things that are going on in the city right now, uh, things that maybe the DEIC will want to plug in with or just things to be aware of um, when we're thinking about, you know, what are the, what are the priorities, what, what are the things that this committee is going to work on. Um, and then uh, I think uh, we'll want to spend a little bit of time hearing from you all about just what are things on your mind? What are things that you're hoping to um, hoping to see this committee work on or think about or just things that potentially um, might be priorities for the committee? And then um, I hope that we will um, come out of this meeting with um, some 
questions or um, requests for information, things that um, I can come back to the next meeting with um, answers to any of those or um, yeah, any information that uh, any of you feel like you need. Um, yeah, so with that, I'm going to stop my screen share and uh, we'll go ahead and get started with introductions. Um, I'll start with myself. Um, we'll, we'll say name, your organization or occupation, um, just a little brief information about your relationship to Estacada and to DEI, um, and then any special or fun fact that you want um, the rest of the committee to know about you. Um, so like I said, my name is Taylor Campy. I'm the city planner for Estacada. Um, I've been working with the city for almost two years now. Um, so not a very long time. I'm still learning a lot about the city and how it works and um, the community here. And um, my relationship to diversity, equity, and inclusion, I've done a lot academically um, and in terms of trainings around DEI work, but I've, I've not held um, any formal position um, working on DEI initiatives or issues. So I'm excited to be doing so here. Um, it's something that I care a lot about. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and read the little intro description that Christina submitted for, um, for all of you. She was not able to make it tonight. She's working at a vaccine clinic um, and her hours were changed last minute. So um, Christina Carney says, I've lived in Estacada for nearly 19 years with my husband. Um, our dog and cat. I love spending time with my family and friends, getting outdoors, baking and learning again as an adult to play piano. She graduated from Oregon State University, has a degree in healthcare administration. Um, and during the pandemic, she made a career trip, uh, sorry, shift after managing long-term care facilities for 20 years. Um, she's excited now to work in public service and currently is working for the Oregon Health Authority had been working with COVID-19 testing. Just recently, her team transitioned to actual vaccine clinics. So uh, that's why she's missing this meeting. Um, and she looks forward to working with all of you and supporting this wonderful community of Estacada as we work on DEI. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and call on the next person. Um, Aaron, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure, um, I'm Aaron Smith. I am, my day job is as an interim dean at Mount Hood Community College. But I've worked there for like se uh, 17 years, I think. So um, I'm kind of a lifer. Um, what were the other questions? I already, I already forgot. No worries. Um, your relationship to Estacada and DEI. Okay. Um, my relationship to Estacada, we've lived here since 2014, grew up in Sandy, so not far away from here. Um, and my little trivia bit is that my dad was the middle school principal for a couple of years in the 90s. Um, so, and my relationship to DEI work, so we focus a lot on this and higher education and as we know East Multnomah County is rapidly changing and very diverse and so we're constantly learning and trying to figure out how to best serve our changing community so I'm really excited to be able to put that work that I've done there to use here because I think it's only positive to be able to be more inclusive of the people who live in our community. Awesome, thank you. Um, let's go ahead and hear from Trina. Okay, um, I've lived in Estacada for, in June will be 28 years, raised four kids. Um, I'm recently sort of retired. Um, I got medically let go because my eyes are bad. So I'm trying to find another job, but liking retirement. Um, for the diversity, I wanna see, I want to see get more more people involved 
from different backgrounds and have more inclusive so everybody's included that's one of my goals with the community that's about it <laughs> glad to have you you're in the right place for that um kurt hello hi how are you doing um, my name's Kurt. I've lived in Estacada for just under seven years. Uh, I too am, I like to say retired because I hate the term uh, dis being out on disability. I was medically put out because of uh, certain reasons. Uh, I have kind of a different background than probably everybody on this committee. My background is law enforcement. I started in the 90s as a correctional officer, I attained the rank of sergeant, ran what most people would refer to as a whole, the disciplinary segregation, administrative segregation, death row, mental health um, for a number of years, transitioned out of that into straight law enforcement. I was a chief of police of a small town back in South Dakota. So like I said, my my background's a, probably a little bit different than most everybody else's on this uh, committee, but uh, to Trina's point, I, I just want to see more people involved it, with the town and with everything that's going on. It, and that's what I'm hoping to bring to this. Awesome. Glad to have you. Thank you. Um, Shannon, would you like to introduce yourself next? Yeah, hi, I'm Shannon and I've lived in Estacada for about three years. Um, I work at the Greater Health Clinic. I help run the Great Compassion Small Animal Rescue. Um, I homeschool our children and I'm a full-time master's student. I'm just lucky enough to have been chosen to be part of this um, committee. And I'm going to do a lot of listening and learning in the beginning. I've worked with the needy and transient, transient communities as well as the elderly and fun fact we have chickens which we call our ladies nice i suppose you have uh you get fresh eggs then lots of fresh eggs <laughs> awesome um frank hello would you like to introduce yourself hello yeah sorry my camera isn't working i think i do need to update zoom but I didn't want that to end up taking forever and then miss the meeting. <laughs> um, yeah, so my name's Frank. Um, I've lived in Estacada for most of my life, uh, Estacada and Eagle Creek. So um, I guess besides a few, about 20 years spent in the community. Um, I am a teacher. I currently work in a private Catholic Montessori school in Portland. Um, but I'm, I'm trained to be a public school, high school English teacher is my, my um, training background. Um, my program that I was in in grad school and in my undergraduate as well was very focused on ideas of diversity and inclusion. And so kind of like what I think it was, um, Taylor, what you said, um, somebody said, like having kind of like an academic, a lot, I've done a lot of academic work around um around the concepts but not a ton of um experience really practicing it out and implementing it so i'm really excited to have this opportunity to be putting some of those ideas to the test and finding um out how they work and what needs to change what what works what doesn't especially in the context of the rural community i feel like that so that was one area where my school my school was very focused on urban urban care and urban outreach and oftentimes rural communities were just kind of left out and folks who were from rural communities were expected to just move into the city and forget about their small town. And, and so I'm really passionate about seeing the ideas um, brought out into, into the rural communities and um, see how we can change and grow and, and get closer together, like Kurt and Trina have said. Um, I think, let's see, is there anything? Yeah, teacher, Love diversity. Um, I think I guess you did ask also like some some goals. I, I I really am passionate also from my university years. We had a strong emphasis on interfaith cooperation, and I feel like so strongly that especially in the rural context, our churches and our faith communities are so much a a, a strong part of our community. And so 
I hope that we can bring together people who might disagree spiritually, different congregations to serve the community better um, and, and really promote some change that way is something I'm passionate about. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Awesome, thank you. And I think last but not least, Jessica, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so I'm Jessica. I have lived in Estacada on and off for quite some time. I graduated from Estacada High School um, and I've been here for the past 10 years or so. I currently, I have a master's in social work and I work as a clinical social worker in a psychiatric hospital. And I've done a lot of micro work with individuals and I, I see that um, sometimes the system is what really fails people. And I, I wanna work towards um, being more involved in the macro work and seeing how we can improve um, the systems that we live in and, um, and bring our community together. And that's something that I, in a positive way, and that's something I really hope to see with this uh, committee. Um, my goals currently are just to listen and to, to understand the perspectives of my fellow committee members. Um, and develop uh, goals more in a collaborative way. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Um, so I, I am the, I guess you would say primary staff or staff liaison for this committee, um, but we will regularly be joined by other city staff. We have two city staff here with us, um, Taryn and Michelle, uh, would you, be so kind as also to introduce yourselves. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Michelle Kinneman, and I'm the library director at Estacada Public Library. I've been there um, 11 years, 11 and a half years. And, um, you know, really the, one of the core values of libraries is inclusion because we see such a wide range of people and hope to continue, especially in Estacada, some of the work that we've started with outreach to communities. Um, so my role here is gonna be at, as a library liaison to just listen to what you're saying. And um, I'm hoping that the library can be a resource for this committee if you need any materials or research or just anything that the library can get for you. And don't hesitate to uh, give me a call, I'm there all week. Thanks, that's it. Um, I'm Taryn, I work at City Hall. I'm primarily the front desk person and I do the, the court clerk and I'm the accounting person as well, a little bit of everything. Um, and yeah, I look forward to listening in on these meetings and helping Taylor if she needs it and learning more always excited to learn more. So um, yeah. All right, that's everybody. Um, so yeah, moving on to our next agenda item here. Um, I heard back from most but not all of you and it, that's a little bit um, maybe my fault. I, I included a lot of questions uh for you to re things for you to respond to in that uh, first email that went out um we are going to want to identify a regular meeting time that works for everybody um in the event that we can't find a regular meeting time that works for everybody we could alternate um you know, every, every other meeting is on, you know, some day that works for most and a different day that works for most, but the other people who, you know. Um, ideally though, we would have a regular meeting time. Um, it sounds like from the responses that I did get, um, 6 to 7 p.m. will work for most people on either the first Wednesday of the month or the second Thursday of the month. Um, and so I'm interested in hearing from folks on this call 
Um, do, do both of those work for everybody? Does one of those not work for anyone? Um, go ahead and unmute yourself and blurt out <laughs> uh, whether it doesn't. Uh, I think the second Thursday of the month works just fine. Second Thursday? Second pretty, much everybody, pretty much everybody made it to this call except for the, the lady that had to do the vaccinations and that was sounds like it was something that just came up so right i think i think i would i either one does work for me i would love the second thursday um because i feel like things tend to crop up for me with work or school on wednesday evenings randomly so um thursday is probably good for me but i'm open yep. second thursday of the month works for me as well is I'm any open to either. Okay. I'm good with any of them. All right. Um, it is hereby established, I don't know, uh, that we'll go ahead and um, meet on the second Thursday of the month. And I heard from most of you also that um, monthly meetings sounds like makes the most sense at this time. Um, it is, I think, think written into the ordinance that created this committee that the committee itself gets to decide um, its regular meeting schedule. So um, if we get a little ways into this and um, folks are starting to feel some agreement that the meetings are too frequent, maybe it needs to be every other month or that there's just too much content and you wanna be meeting um, twice a month, uh, that's something that you can revisit. Um, but for now, we'll set it at the second Thursday of the month, monthly meetings from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Awesome. I have a quick question, Taylor, related to that. Um, are we like, because I know like the city council has its like workshop sessions where they are doing like extra business and discussion. Mm -hmm. Could there be, say, if we were working on some type of project that was sort of specifically needing more collaboration time, but in general, besides that, we wouldn't need that. Can we have a, can we call like a random one time extra meeting and announce yeah. it ahead of time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think those could, those would probably just be called a workshop or, um, yeah, we would probably just call it a workshop and um, hope that most people could make it. But um, I don't know if this is written into the ordinance actually. Um, maybe this is something the committee will decide, you know, if there's an expectation that committee members attend at least so many meetings per year, um, you know, then of course the sort of ad hoc or workshop meetings wouldn't be included in that, right? The expectation is that you kind of, you commit to yeah. attending most of the regular meetings and then the sort of one-off or ad hoc meetings um, would be in addition to that. But absolutely, yeah, you can um, okay. schedule a um, sort of case by case if there's a particular issue that you really wanna uh, focus in on. Yep. Okay, and, and then kind of going off of that, um, say like if we decided like three of us are working on some type of specific issue, but not everybody is working on developing it, are we able to meet together and work on that without it being a public meeting, or are we do we are we kind of required to do all of our business in the public eye, so to speak, as far as always having it recorded and posted on the website? Yeah, that's a good question, and I don't know. The answer to that. I don't know if Taryn or Michelle knows the answer. Um, yeah, it gets a little tricky when you're meeting. And I, I don't know if it's so how many people are? Seven. 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 So is it four is a quorum? Four would be a quorum. Yeah. I mean we I can double check it, but it I do think there are concerns about it being considered a meeting if you're 
Oh, mm-hmm. like if there's if there's a quorum, then it technically becomes like a meeting of the committee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Okay. That's not I was just thinking like if, you know, if like Aaron and me are supposed to write up some report on something, like if we're able to like get together and work on it and discuss it without having to like drag everybody else out of their schedule. To have yeah, it might be okay if you're working on something specific and you're not making decisions or anything like that. It probably okay. is fine. Um, I, I'm sure that probably is okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I can imagine that in the context of like we're preparing, gathering information to share as a presentation yeah. at the meeting or something. Yeah. yeah, it's probably fine. But yeah, we can definitely double check that and let you know because um, there are tricky rules with that. Yeah. Yep. I'll, um, I'm adding that to the list of questions to try to have answered for our next meeting. So thank you for that. Um, okay, cool. So next up, we're doing great on time here. Um, just a quick overview um, of the purpose and charge from the city council. I'll go ahead and share my screen again. So, um, in case you're not all familiar with, can we get this out of here? Um, okay. In case you're not all familiar with the city's website, um, I'll just actually go here from the website so that you can see where, how to get here. Um, we're in the process of, I just put in the request today, actually, um, uh, we created the page for the committee, but um, we actually need to go through our uh, web admin people um, to get it to show up on these, like some of the menu, like it should just automatically show up on this menu here, but it doesn't. So we're having them edit that. So, but what you can do right now to get to the page is government boards and committees. You can click on that and um, or it's just cityofesticated.org slash bc for boards and commissions sorry and then here we are diversity equity and inclusion committee um this page will be updated with um your names and um term lengths some of you are two-year terms and some of you are three-year terms um I'm not sure whether we have to put your email. Um, Taryn, do you know if, if they need to have an email address like on file with the city to post on the website? I, I don't know that it has to be posted on the website. I think most of them are, but I think if you don't want it on there, I don't think it has to be. Yeah. I don't think it's a requirement, so. I have a question. So, I mean, I think it sounds like a good idea for us to be all reachable because I think we'll appeal to different segments of the population who might feel comfortable reaching out to us individually. Mm -hmm. Um, What do you, like when you receive an email in regards to official committee business, like what is our obligation from there? Um, Yeah, that's, I. I think that might be up to the committee to decide. I mean, um, I guess the my inclination would be respond with whatever, um, you know, you can speak from your perspective and your experience, um, but I think uh, you wouldn't want to respond necessarily on behalf of the whole committee without first bringing that correspondence to the committee. Um, But I would welcome other committee members here to, yeah, chime in on that. Could it be something we just share with the other committee members? Possibly be able to answer the question as a committee? Yeah. Yeah. Is is there an official email address for the committee, or it's just us as individuals? 
There's not currently an email address for the committee, but we do have, I know that we have something like that set up for the city council where, um, you know, it's like, whatever it is, city council at sdkata.org or something like that. And um, emails to that address will, you know, forward it to all of the individual council members. Um, I'm not sure how the reply and the back and forth works for that, but um, we could set something like that up so that at least everyone is receiving emails. Um, yeah, we could we could do that for sure. Um, I like the idea of a committee email more than putting a personal email up. Okay. I do too, or at least even if like like I noticed that like Councillor Litke has an email address that's with the city domain, like even if we had an official email, because then it's like I think about just having a record of anything that we are corresponding with people from the public about, I feel like should be kept on be able to be accessed um so that we can, you know, see what did what did what did so and so say to um a business owner or whatever when they emailed and um so i'd definitely be open to those accountability um measures i think are important on the email could they personally email you though and not uh, and not have everybody else see let's say someone wanted to to reach out to just one person on the committee does it go to everybody though i don't think there's anything established yet and that's what we get to decide is how we yeah. want it I would, I would like, I'd like people to be able to email me individually or someone else. And then if I needed to answer it personally, I can answer it personally. But if it's a group thing, you know, or something that the group needs to decide on, then we need to bring it to the group. Yeah, I think overall, I think that's because I think if it's also going to be difficult, if we're all getting inundated with, if I'm getting emails that are really just for Trina to answer and my phone is buzzing a bunch about it. I'm gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be hard for me to know what I need to look at. And so, yeah, it's, it'll be interesting to see what we come up with. Yeah, so, um, so I'll make a note here then. Um, we can find out what are the, what are the laws around um, for this being a public, a city committee? Um, what are the laws around that correspondence? Um, when does a committee member need to disclose um, a communication about an issue? Um, I think that I have thought that to be more um, more of an issue for like the council or the planning commission who are voting to approve or adopt things, whereas the um, this committee is an advisory committee, um, but you will be making decisions about what advice uh, you are officially um, recommending to the council. So um, yeah, that might still be a concern. So I'll um, check in on that for our next meeting and um, we can definitely at least get the, the group set up with a, um, yeah, like a DEIC wide email um, option. Um, okay, cool. Let's go back to screen share here. Okay, so I think, I hope we all know how to get to this if you want to do so. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the council, actually this page needs to be um, with the precise language, but um, so the council adopted language similar to this around um, the purpose and responsibility of this group. And so we'll just go through those here um, and that will lead into our next agenda items. So um, you are charged with providing input and advice for city officials and staff to advance equity as a central component component of public processes and decision making, 
um, city officials includes both the city council and the planning commission. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we'll talk in a little bit about, um, and maybe some of the other uh, committees also, um, we'll talk a little bit about some of the processes going on and things that this committee um, might wanna be involved with. Uh, assisting the city on outreach and engagement with historically underrepresented and marginalized groups, providing community oversight and opportunities for the city to have greater accountability to the community, the community on equity, inclusion, and diversity, providing input and, adv and advising the city in the development of a strategic plan to advance diversity, equity, and inclusion, both among the government and the community. Um, evaluating the city's progress on equity related goals, objectives and action plans and uh, reviewing current policies and procedures with an equity lens. So that last one and maybe even the last two um, being kind of kind of like a um, I, I think of it as sort of like an audit of um, yeah, how, how the city is doing, how the city has been doing. Um, oh Lord. Um, yeah, how, how the city's current systems might be um, preventing the um, equal opportunity for inclusion um, or might be um, unfairly disadvantaging certain groups or or whatnot, and then once once we do have identified equity um, plans and goals and um, initiatives, evaluating well, how are we doing on these, and paying attention to kind of those um, metrics that will hopefully be included in that strategic plan. Um, does anybody have questions? I, I'm talking a lot. Sorry. <laughs> um, does anyone have questions at this point about? what the counts or what the um, committee is charged with. No. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, let me pull up my notes. Um, one moment. I think um, just for now, a couple questions related to um, like with the auditing of the departments, are we able to so say we want to talk to members of the planning commission about, about this. Are we able to kind of request, send a request, you know, we would like to speak to at least one representative of the commission in our meeting, come and, and tell us what you're doing. Are we able to kind of put those requests to, um, um, to have those people come and speak with us? Um, are we able to do that? Yeah, um, yeah, that's definitely something that we could coordinate. Um, if I'm understanding you correctly, just inviting members of the Planning Commission or the City Council or another committee to join one of the DEI committee's meetings. Yeah, almost like, um, yeah, just like we're here, like say we're in the middle of an auditing the, the Planning Commission for their effectiveness and DEI almost like bringing them in to interview them about and ask them whatever questions we have um, about what they've been doing and how they plan to continue like that. Are we able to do that in the meeting or is that something that's gonna happen kind of off stage? Um, well, I, I think that, I think it's kind of up to the committee um, or it will be up to the committee and maybe whatever, uh, consultant gets hired to help us develop a strategic plan. Um, yeah, what those strategies are gonna be or what those, um, yeah. In what ways are you gonna um, kind of do that exploration of uh, what are the different groups and departments at the city working on and how have they been how have they been doing their work and what are the things they've been focusing on or not focusing on? Um, so I would say, yes, that's an option. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, another question that I had in, in, so I know like you're kind of, 
your answer is like it, some of these things are up to us so um when do you see like well, this is our first meeting when do you see like the appropriate time for us discussing what we want to put into like kind of like our bylaws or the way that we are going to run the committee when are we going to um when should we make those decisions about just those systems of governance and yeah um so for the next meeting i can i can bring to the next meeting um at least information about how that process what needs to happen for those um if we want to call them bylaws i don't know if it would if that's what we call it in other committees um uh but yeah i could i can bring information about that process to the next meeting um at which point we'll have the timeline um, and can then at least start on um, the committee's conversation about what need what you want to be included in those bylaws. Um, and then on the staff side, uh, we do all of the administrative work of getting them codified and- uh, Okay, sort of okay. So you, so you would be the one that's like responsible for for writing that up once we've decided what's in that we wouldn't like delegate that to somebody right yeah okay. so you all would um develop those bylaws um maybe that would include a a process of developing a mission statement um <clears throat> and then we take that input from you and turn it into i guess code mm -hmm. uh, okay I'm looking at Taryn for, <laughs> um, this is also a new process for me too. So I'll be kind of learning with you as we go along. Yeah, so yeah, I'd be adopted into the, the, the code for okay. the specific mission. Awesome. Okay. Does that help um, answer your question partially at least? Yeah, for sure. Um, and, oh, um, one question, I guess, and maybe it's just a, another thing where we decide of, I imagine like if we are going to issue advice to a, another member or another um, body of the of the government um, that we would be voting on that as a committee to approve that advice once it's been drafted up. Um, for doc, well, for doc, I guess a side thing would be like for documents for like our opinion on how the planning commission is doing. Would that be also something that you would be writing the official statement for, or would we be doing those types of writing um, ourselves? Um, you would be welcome to to bring language like yeah you would be more than welcome to that would make my job easier <laughs> okay okay good to know the specific language that you want um yeah that you want the recommendation to to read um but it is sort of it is staff's job to write up you know the minutes or um mm -hmm. publish the any report that comes out of this committee, um, we're responsible for making sure that that gets published and um, saved properly in the city's drive and on the website and et cetera. Um, but yeah, absolutely. If you if you want to wanted to draft something up um, in those instances, that's great. Okay, um, and then I, that was leading into the question of like, do we get to decide? I mean, there's so many things and different committees where certain things are decided by a two thirds majority, some are three fifths. Like, do we decide those types of benchmarks for what it means to pass a, a motion to advise uh, another committee or, or produce some type of opinion? Yeah, my understanding is that that gets um, written into the, the ordinance, the so the bylaws, if we want to call them that. Um, so that's something that you'll want to okay. decide among yourselves um, when, when we get to the time to develop those bylaws. Um, yeah, do you want it to be a simple majority? Do you want it to be a two thirds majority? Yeah. Okay. You'll get to decide all of that. Awesome. I think that's about it that I have for now. Thank you so much for answering those. Yeah, thank you. Good questions, hard questions, but good. <laughs> I have a couple questions that aren't quite diving as deep as sure. Frank was, but... Um... <laughs> so it sounds like this committee, not only is it new, 
but it's sort of a new entity in how it interacts with the rest of the local government in general. So we're kind of all feeling out, there's no template or you know past practice that we can really draw from to mold this after, is that correct? Exactly, no past practice at the city. Um, I mean, I think uh, certainly staff and maybe also the council is interested in kind of seeing how other DEI related committees have interacted with their decision making bodies or um, agency staff, but yeah, no, there's no uh, precedent at the city for this committee. Okay. Um, I mean, are any of the other local towns of commensurate size or, you know, our local towns, do they have something similar to this? I, like, I don't think Sandy's doing anything like this. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, and I'm not sure I haven't, I haven't looked around at all of the other um, much smaller towns. I've certainly you hear about larger cities, you know, establishing committees like this, but um, I have not, I've not heard of small towns um, that have a similar committee. I think it's really cool. So I think that's like a, a bonus point for Astacada. Um, and then the final thing is, I mean, I might at some point need like a, a Cliff Notes version of government 101 on how like, you know, I see commissions and committees and like, what's the difference in those? And so we can better understand the mechanism that we're operating within. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. Um, <clears throat> We, maybe we can. Taylor, oh. that that does exist. Uh -huh. I was gonna I was gonna talk about that the library board, and I can't remember because I haven't seen this for a long time. But there's a publication that's kind of like a blue book, and it's a blueprint for how to interact as a board in in local governments. And I have a copy or two probably in my office, and I've been googling and trying to figure out where what the title is and how to get some more. For this committee in case it's in case it's relevant it may not be strictly library based it may be just how to interact as a government entity a committee and a government entity yeah that would be great i will try to find some details about that it, michelle do you know is it is it different than robert's rules of order it is because it talks about sunshine laws which is or the um, meeting the meeting rules for public meetings okay. and it explains why you can't meet privately or through emails or on the phone so it's very it's very informative so even if I found you a copy and it didn't and if it was directed towards libraries it's still going to be directed towards boards in general so it may be useful yeah that would be that would be helpful also for me um, and I think yeah so I think some combination of um, of that and then also maybe like Estacada specific sort of government structure. Um, there may be some bylaws can, also, uh, like our Friends of the Library either. has, I'm sorry, let me go ahead. Our Friends of the Library okay. have their bylaws. It might be useful if they saw just some examples of bylaws that exist of, of you know, various organizations. Um, our friends at the library has one that they could just look at for an example. Probably our board does, our library board does too. Um, I don't know if the other committees of the city have bylaws, but it really helps. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if, if there's gonna be officers like a secretary to take notes or, or you know, a chairperson of this committee. Um, those are just some things that the library board has a, a president, a vice president, and I'm the secretary. It does not have a treasurer. Okay, yeah. Um, there's definitely the intention to, um, after a few meetings, uh, and I don't know what the timeline, if there's requirements around when this happens, but um, for this committee to uh, vote on a chair and a vice chair um, but yeah, I think maybe that can be part of the discussion, um, the bylaws discussion. Do you want 
a, a secretary or other positions that um, the committee decides to fill. Um, okay, well, I, I will add those few things to our list of questions to explore before our next meeting. I'm gonna, paying attention to the time, I'm gonna zoom through a really brief overview of um, some of the things happening here at the city um, just to orient, begin to orient you um, on some of the major issues and projects going on. Um, and then hopefully we can wrap up with a super lightning speed um, brainstorming session or question generation session, um, just to hear from you about anything else that feels like um, questions you want answered or um, things that might, that you, that you think uh, the committee might wanna prioritize working on. So, um, a few projects and issues going on in the city right now or this year. Um, the city will be, will soon be starting a housing needs analysis process, um, which is looking at our current um, housing, uh, sort of housing market, the demand in our housing market, looking at the buildable lands that we have, and then looking at the projected population growth um, and the breakdown of income across that popu projected population, projecting out for the next 20 years. Um, and so that housing needs analysis will hopefully result in um, data that'll show us uh, our housing need, our projected housing need for the next 20 years. And um, that project is um, attached to a housing strategy, uh, kind of like a housing, housing production action plan um, that is intended to help us meet the need for housing that's identified by that. Um, there is, I, I probably don't need to explain this, but there's a, a lot of overlap with um, issues of housing, um, housing access and housing uh, stability and security and issues of diversity, equity and inclusion. So that process is something that um, I definitely, I hope that this committee will be able to um, give input and participate in um, the, the public involvement around that process for sure. The transportation system plan, uh, which is a, a comprehensive, also looking 20 years into the future um, at our projected growth um, and looking at the patterns of development and looking at the existing transportation system, um, problems with it, things that the community wants to see changed. Uh, we got a grant to update our transportation system plan, which is outdated. Um, and so that project will also be starting this summer. Um, and certainly opportunities um, and um, need for a DEI um, sort of lens uh, to give input on that plan. So I look forward to, um, yeah, this committee giving some input there. There is also an ad hoc temporary committee on housing affordability and diversity um, that has begun meeting. It just had its second meeting this week. Um, and I can share, I wonder if those are, are public. Taryn, do you know if it's an ad hoc committee? Are those meetings also like open to the public even if it's not a standing city committee? I can, I'll. Yeah, I don't know if they are, sorry. No worries, I'll look into that for the next meeting. Um, Cause like I said, with housing issues, there's a lot of overlap there with DEI. Um, there are a lot of needed updates to our development code and other sections of our code. I'm sure I'm most familiar in planning with the development code. Um, and so that is one area where um, it might be really tedious, but um, sort of talking about that audit of uh, city procedures and policies. Um, that is one area where like, are there things about our code that are preventing people from being able to access facilities or being able to um, use their 
property in ways that um, they need to or that would be fair, um, things like that. And then lastly, um, there is, we are experiencing major, we are about to experience major um, growth in this city. Um, we have processed over the past, um, over the past year or so, moved or received applications for subdivisions um, that will, um, that are proposing or that we've already approved um, a total of some 1,000 new uh, lots or apartment building or apartment units actually. Um, so I'm estimating there are about a thousand new units coming into the city in the next few years, five years or so maybe. Um, and so that's a lot of growth for the city. And so um, as we're thinking about all of these diversity, equity, inclusion issues, um, yeah, keeping in mind that we're also in the, uh, in the middle of or about to experience this big growth spurt. So um, yeah, just, just keeping that kind of as context for some of our conversations, I think. Um, that's a super brief overview. There's of course, lots more going on at the city all the time, um, but I don't wanna take up more of our time. We've got about six more minutes. And so I would like to now hear from all of you, what are some questions um, that you would like to have answered that Maybe that haven't been brought up yet, um, information that we can hopefully find for you for the next meeting or um, soon thereafter, or um, priorities that you think uh, this committee should consider working towards or including in um, the, yeah, the committee sort of responsibilities um, that aren't already included in the committee purpose. I want to hear from the people who haven't talked much. I know, same. I feel like I'm talking too much. I'm talking too much. <laughs> There's no wrong answers. One thing I'd like to see is that like the summer fair thing that they have downtown, more inclusion with different groups whether it be from gun advocates to Black Lives Matter to whatever, we need more everybody. I'd like to see us do something to make, to invite more people in. I'm gonna ask a question. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Since the quiet people aren't speaking up. So the um, web page mentioned the use of an equity lens. Has any work been done to begin to build that tool yet? No, um, no, it has not. And yeah, that's, that's a great point. It's been, um, yeah, that's, a term that gets used a lot and um, is not, the definition is not always accompanying the use of the term. Um, the intention of, uh, one of the intentions of forming the committee is, is that the committee will help develop a strategic plan for diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, which the city, the council, um, and the city hopes will include that definition, the development of that um, lens, uh, you know, what are the mechanics of that lens? Um, but no, that, that work hasn't been done yet. And that's kind of um, part of why you're all here and what, and what you're here to help with. So, yeah. Okay. I think that's a like top, like kind of high up there on my priority list. It's hard to do the other things until you've sort of developed the the list of questions or the different ways that you're going to consider all other decisions. Yeah. That's a really good point, Erin. I wasn't even thinking about the, I guess I didn't really perceive fully that intention of the language in the, in the charge being as like a physical actual, like 
set of criteria that makes up the land. So I was kind of thinking of it more just, I've always heard that of like, oh, like look at the world through a lens of equity, like just in your perception of it. So to know that we actually do need to create some type of uh, a form of formal criteria that we apply to every single situation, um, which makes sense because that way we're treating every every committee equally and to the same test um, is really important. So I, I would agree with Aaron that that should be some uh, top priority. Um, and um, yeah, I feel like, I don't know, it's, it feels like there's so much to do and it feels like an hour once a month is not going to be enough. <laughs> feels like we're going to need to need a lot more or um and that's why I feel like especially wanting to know um what we're free to do because I feel like if everybody's having to constantly be all together in order to get the progress done that becomes a very cumbersome and I naturally want to delegate like for myself so that I can be more effective and and see us all getting the things moving um so knowing what we what we have the freedom to do like if Kurt has the freedom to compile a bunch of resources about policing in a in small town context and bring it to our next meeting and tell us all about it. And then we can vote on it rather than us all having to um, like do it all together at the exact same time. If we can have that delegation would, I feel like would increase our effectiveness. Um, so knowing what we are um, allowed to do is, I think for me, a big thing so that I know how to start spending my evenings. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's a great point. And I'll just uh, quickly respond to that example. Um, there would be no problem with an individual committee member, you know, going and doing research, collecting information um, and bringing it back to the group. I think the the legal, it gets sticky when multiple committee members are you know, co coordinating with each other, but not with the rest of the committee. And so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to you at the next meeting with an answer on, you know, whether or not you can um, have basically what constitutes a meeting um, in terms of how many committee members talking with each other um, without the rest of the committee. Um, I guess, sorry, I know I'm asking so many questions. I guess to follow up now, I'm wondering, are we able to form subcommittees that then can meet? Like if Kurt, Trina and Aaron are on something um, and they're, they're like appointed to a subcommittee on policing, can they then all meet by themselves to have that kind of work group? Is that something that could happen? Um, that seems to me like it's something that could happen. It might though need to be um, like it, it, I think there might be limits on like whether it could be a like decision-making body, mm. decision-making meeting. Mm. Um, yeah, like whether that whether a decision was being made during the meeting and um, we can also find out, so we'll find that out for you and also find out whether or not it would need to be um, recorded and have minutes Gotcha. We are at uh, we are at time here. It is seven o'clock p.m. Um, that went by really fast. I think uh, you're you're right in saying that um, an hour once a month might feel like it's not enough, um, and maybe it won't be. Um, you know, maybe we'll we'll have to um, set up some of those ad hoc. Um, or workshop meetings. Um, so, um, yeah, unless there's any other remaining questions, I see a hand, Erin. Did, did you see my comment in the chat? No, I didn't. Okay. Can we get uh, demographic oh. data? I just want like a scan. Like, what do we know about, you know, subpopulations or like how many churches are in the air? I mean, like just so we can start breaking like or creating that scan of our community and see what we know and what we don't know. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we almost should be able to get something like that from the census if the, uh, I don't know when the census Soon. for 2020 has ended, but um, the only other thing is to go back off the prior census and just kind of 
I don't know how how large Estacada has grown since the past census, but I would a imagine lot. it's <laughs> yeah, a lot. quite a lot. But being able to track that trajectory, I think, will also tell a really interesting story. Right. There's a there's a website that I've found that um, I've used for um, the nonprofit that I've worked with called DataUSA.io. And that has, I'm not sure exactly where they pull their data from. I'm assuming they pull it from census and whatnot. It's super well organized and quite can be quite specific about some, um, like, there's opioid deaths by counties. And there's all kinds of very specific data that they have that I, I know I've used that. And then, yeah, I think census is probably the, or Clackamas County might have they might have some stuff broken down by city, but I'm not sure. Yeah, and uh, like Michelle just said, the, the school district and Portland State have um, demographic data and they do the, popu the state's um, population projections too, so. Um, I would imagine that the school district would probably be one of the better sources because they know, they know who's, enrolled at the school and that can kind of give us a baseline you know where to jump from because I mean yeah you can potentially you know look at what is going on in any specific other area but it's and I understand that there are a lot of kids out here that are homeschooled so we whatever we get is not always going to be 100% accurate but I think going off like the school district or the school board data might be as close to perfect as we can get, if that makes sense. I don't know, just a thought. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, well, um, I am uh, leaving this meeting with a great to-do list, thank you. Um, and so let's, before we sign off, I just wanna confirm our next meeting date we're looking at doing second Thursdays. So that should put us at May Thursday, May 13th from 6 to 7 p.m. <laughs> and so I'll, I'll come back with um, a bunch of information for you all. Um, I think we'll, we'll, what we'll probably start doing is um, putting together like a, a meeting packet um, that I can send out a few days ahead of the meeting, um, just assuming that we're gonna have um, documents and information that we're gonna wanna share. Um, so um, I'll send that out with the agenda a few days ahead of the meeting. Um, and in the meantime, um, please, continue to feel free to send over any questions or um, ideas that you've got um, by email. That works great for me. Um, I one, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Trina. I just had one quick question. I don't know Zoom meetings very well. So on the next one, will you send a link or do I just go back to this one? On the next one, I will send another link and actually it, it will be a little different. So for this kickoff meeting, um, I'm, I'm new to the whole committee staffing <laughs> situation and I didn't realize that I needed to post this to the city's website first and um, actually, so they should be um, publicly accessible um, to everyone. And so it will get posted to the city's website and because we'll be doing it that way, it will be in the format of a webinar. Mm -hmm. You all will be able to talk amongst yourselves and it'll be like a Zoom meeting um, for all of us, but it will be viewable by um, any other participants who just want to, you know, basically attend the meeting, um, sit in and watch, so. Gotcha, I'm not sure how you sent this last link out, but the links that you're sending are awesome, especially since all I had to do was push on the one and it brought everything up. I've been on a couple of different ones where it's like, I've got to find out what the meeting passcode is and all this other stuff but however you did it this time perfect Good. i tried to remove the passcode uh, requirement when i awesome 
So um I was wondering if we can get everybody's emails. I had I like set up just for my own self and want to share with everybody um like a Google Drive um for like compiling resources on different like DEI things and just keeping things straight. I wasn't sure I didn't I was not aware that we had a city staff who was going to be doing so much of the record keeping and all that. So some of it is not going to be actually um, handle like I had a space for like meeting minutes thinking that one of us would have to take the meeting minutes and stuff so I would love to be able to share that with you um, all so that we can compile it um, so if you have like a gmail preferably that would be great and I can add you to it um, or if there's a better place where that should be held um, Taylor you can let me know yeah I can um, I can either um, send out all of the emails that you actually what I'll do is I'll on my next email out to you or you can do so before I I send this out um, I will request that everyone send me their preferred email address that you want to use for committee communications um, so if you want to do that right now that's fine or I will also uh, remind you um, when I send out a follow-up email um, so I'll ask you to, to give us a, 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 whichever email you prefer to have both staff and your fellow committee members use for those um, communications. And then, yeah, I think that's a great idea, Frank. Okay. All righty, any other questions? We're, we're a bit over time, so I appreciate you all staying on a few minutes extra. All right. I, th I think for the purpose of the meeting minutes, I have to say uh, this meeting is adjourned at 7.10 p.m. Um, and it was really great to meet all of you. And um, you'll get a follow-up email from me probably tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing you again in a month. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you. so happy to be serving with all of you. It was really great to talk and yes. hear everybody's thoughts. and. I can't wait to keep working. Someday we'll be together having these. I know. <laughs> Maybe. <Hopefully. laughs> all right. Bye. You all have a good day. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.